Zimona Amores is taking the new Opel Corsa out for a test drive. The fifth generation of this perennial bestseller comes across as young, dynamic and restyled. Today, Zimona is putting the new Opel Corsa through its paces. And what is her first impression? She says the new Opel Corsa drives really well. It's a very pleasant ride. There are always situations where you have to get off to a fast start at the stoplight and for that the engine lacks a bit of pickup. But once it's up to speed, it drives very smoothly. She says the tight steering ratio makes it fun to drive and allows for easy manoeuvring. She's very positively surprised and says it handles wonderfully. The new Corsa boasts the same three-cylinder turbocharged gasoline engine with direct fuel injection that Opel fans remember from the Adam. The test car is powered by a one-litre engine with an output of 85 kilowatts. Fuel consumption is rated at 4.9 litres of premium per 100 kilometres. With extras, this colour edition Corsa lists at 20,085 euros in Germany. Opel's Matthias Alt explains that their aim was to make the engine imperceptible so nobody would notice the cars running on three cylinders. To do so, they offset the mass with a balance shaft so it produces less vibration than many four-cylinder engines do. Starting in 1982, the Corsa has been assembled in Saragossa, Spain and Eisenach in eastern Germany. The fifth generation will soon be appearing on showroom floors across Europe. The new Opel Corsa has been thoroughly redesigned to lend its sleeker contours, but an overall beefier look and harmonious lines to enhance its sportiness. All the while, the Corsa preserves its familiar profile. Kurt Bayer of Opel explains that what car makers call signatures are essential here. A recurring motif, for example, are the creases on the hood close to the front. It's a signature you can see on the older cars of the first generations. The same goes for the side profile, where you see the sickle down below. Opel places enormous value on having this signature appear precisely there. That's a mark of quality, and that's very, very important. The interior has also had a makeover, giving it lots of space. Gentle curves, bicoloured accents, soft fabrics and comfortable seats with improved lateral support. An optional 7-inch colour touchscreen can be tucked in between the driver and passenger, featuring the IntelliLink infotainment system. We opened the Bring Go navigation app and waited. And waited. A good 52 seconds until it was ready for use. The new Corsa's rear seats also have plenty of space. The arched roof gives even tall passengers the head and leg room they need. The cargo hatch doesn't skimp either. The split rear seat provides ample space in back. Opel is aiming the new Corsa directly at young, active women like Simona Amores. So what does she think? On the whole, she likes the new Opel Corsa a lot, saying it handles nicely. It's nimble and pleasant. Forward visibility is a bit impaired by the car's long front and the app restricts the navigation system's operation a bit. But otherwise, it's a great car, perfect for the city and pleasant to drive. It's attractive. Thoroughly networked. And equipped with the latest safety technology. The new Opel Corsa, available in German showrooms from December, starting at 11,980 euros. A Porsche e-hybrid workshop in Frankfurt. Fuel consumption and CO2 emissions are the industry's hot topics. And as an innovative sports car maker, Porsche wants to leave others in its dust here too. So it's also rolling the new Cayenne out in an SE hybrid version. Question is, do Porsche and plug-in hybrids really go together?
Der E-Hybrid. Stefan Feg says besides making emission-free and silent driving possible, the E-Hybrid's electric drive can also support the combustion engine, making additional electrical energy available to enable some very sporty driving. The Cayenne's plug-in hybrid engine combines purely electrical driving even across long distances, along with an economical gasoline-powered engine. Its main advantage, lower emissions, without sacrificing the famous Porsche performance. The hybrid technological highlight is the Porsche 918 Super Sports Car. The hybrid concept is uh, normally associated to cheap cars or cars too slow, too boring, and this is the opportunity to demonstrate another chance, another phase of the technology. It's very impressive for me to, that Porsche have this, this kind of a car, a sport car. On the track, the 918 Spider demonstrates that even super sports cars can reach new heights of performance through hybrid technology. Its unique all-wheel drive concept unites a combined electrical and combustion engine on the rear axle and a second electric motor on the front axle. The Cayenne SE Hybrid relies on more than its sporting pedigree. With its 36km range, the E-Drive opens new possibilities for drivers, for instance when driving silently off-road so as not to disturb the local wildlife with engine noise. The battery can of course be charged while driving, but the SE Hybrid can also juice up at a charging station. Drivers can use the facility by entering a special code. The charging socket is found on the driver's side. Porsche's Martin Gutmann says the new e-hybrid has a much larger battery and a higher performance e-engine. The advantage for customers is being able to drive electrically up to 36 kilometers in the city and have a 3.4 litre fuel consumption rate according to the new European standard. That's the theory. With 306 kilowatts of performance, slightly less than that of the Cayenne S, the SE Hybrid costs 82,087 euros. That's 2,000 more than the Cayenne S. The hybrid sprints from 0 to 100 kmh in 5.9 seconds, but can the driver resist temptation and hold consumption below 4 litres? During the workshop, Porsche let the journalists try. I'd like to go quickly through the, um, the consumption figures that you achieved on the, on the way here. So, as you all you don't see them, it's 4.1, 4.3, 3.8 and 6.0 in the different uh, teams of the Cayenne. I think uh, I, I really enjoy it when the engine starts still, but uh, I think the hybrid technology is, 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 is what we will see more of in the future, definitely. It's quite unique to have a car that doesn't say anything when you drive it in the IE hybrid and then you can turn it to the uh, to the engine and still experience this fantastic Porsche feeling when you drive so both uh, modes are quite fantastic I think well there's no denying it's a Porsche it's uh, it drives like a Porsche and it's got it does exactly what you want it to do uh, it, it uh, turns nicely it brakes nicely it's it's got a perfect balance and uh, the fact that it's uh, a combination of hybrid driver and electric and, and, and uh, combustion engine doesn't really affect the, the, the driving, um, the driving uh, appeal of the car. So it's, uh, it's, it's a very nice, uh, nicely put together package. Future generations of Porsche sports cars are sure to benefit from today's e-hybrid progress. Porsche and hybrid fit together hand in glove. Even the sports car maker's founder, Ferdinand Porsche, experimented with hybrid drive. Mazda's new design and technology elements are bringing some fresh air to the compact car segment. The brand's 2 model has been redesigned from the ground up. It will be available in one diesel and three gasoline-powered versions, all of which boast fuel consumption rates under 5 litres. 
and all engines are fitted with the fuel-saving I-Stop Stop-Start system as standard. The Mazda 2 starts in Germany at €12,790. BMW presents the sporty spearhead version of the X5. Packing a 4.4-litre twin-turbocharged V8, this X5 is built to give goosebumps. Over 400 kilowatts of power hurl this brawny beast from 0 to 100 kilometres an hour in just 4.2 seconds. And smart all-wheel drive with DSC dynamic stability control keeps drivers firmly on the road or on request, allowing a bit of drift. Car tester Martis Kurat says Mercedes launched Generation 3 of its mid-size van, the Vito, last spring as a cargo van, multi-purpose auto and a people carrier, the Tourer. Now he's finally got a chance to test drive the basic model, the Tourer Base. The Vito Tourer is available in two other option packages and three sizes. We tested the compact version, which starts in Germany at just under €34,000. A crosswind assist is standard in all versions. The focus is on safety, efficiency and economy. Felix Braun of Mercedes-Benz Vans says single-minded design sets the Vito apart. All adjustment levers have been improved for the customer. The van's more affordable and fuel consumption has been reduced by an average 20% for all engines. So now it's the lowest in the segment. And service intervals have been extended to every 40,000 kilometers or every two years. The robust body design includes skirting made of scratch-resistant plastic. The Vito is generally used as a light commercial vehicle, but now Mercedes is aiming for the people carrier segment with space for seven passengers besides the driver. In the basic version, the load compartment is kept bare of trim, so it's as robust as the exterior. We tested the Tora Base 114 CDI. The four-cylinder diesel puts out 100 kilowatts at a maximum torque of 330 newton meters. This version has only rear-wheel drive. Ideally, fuel consumption is rated at 6.1 liters of fuel per 100 kilometers. But for the first time, Mercedes is offering front-wheel drive versions of the Vito. Martis says this engine is no track style, but for a people carrier that isn't hauling extra loads, it gets the job done. The Vito has a range of suspensions, from a basic one in the cargo van to a more advanced one in the Tora base and the newly developed comfort suspension in the Tora Pro and Tora Select. But the one in the Tora Base is more than adequate. The base version's interior is simple and neatly arranged. Its design is based on the Mercedes Sprinter. Felix Braun points out the different target groups for the Vito Tora's different price classes. The Vito Tora base is very popular in Europe for transporting workers to construction sites or athletes in sports clubs. The higher priced equipment lines are suitable for taxis, hotel and airport shuttles, or simply for a big family. And in practice, all eight Matis Kurats confirm that all eight of the Tora base's seats are comfortable and spacious enough for a whole crew. The Sprinter's upholstery fabric is robust and easy to clean, so you don't need to worry about smudging up the seats in dirty work clothes. And Matis Kurat agrees. To sum up, 
He says the Vito Tora base is just the ticket for jobs that get down and dirty. And where a more versatile people carrier is required, the higher quality versions are definitely worth a closer look.